me, Charlie, can you focus the camera? It's out of focus. Yes, Mr. E, give me a moment. Okay, Charlie, you gotta have to, you gotta be on, on your toes, man. The students are waiting. Sorry, Mr. E, I'm trying my best. All right, okay. So, okay guys, so we are going, to, can everybody see the camera? Am I in focus? Yep, everybody yes, good? How are you? Hey, welcome Vidal. How is the sound? Excellent, sounds awesome. great. Sounds good. Can you see me well? Okay, perfect. Sure. Okay, great team. So in tonight's class, we're going to talk about call center soft skills, and we're going to uh, have our first troubleshooting session, first out of three. Now, um, we're going to, first of all, talk about what is troubleshooting. I'm going to try to give you an, a, a quick overview of what is troubleshooting and some of the key vocabulary that we're going to learn for our first lesson. So. To begin with, we're going to give you a quick definition. So what is troubleshooting? So um, troubleshooting, we'll say, for instance, we'll use troubleshooting as a noun here. So we'll say troubleshooting is the systematic, uh, is, is the systematic uh, process um, to determine the root cause of a problem in regard to the internet and other issues, let's say. Okay, so we're going to start with a general definition of what is troubleshooting. So. Let's go over it. So first of all, troubleshooting is a call center uh, process that, that is very common. It's, it's an activity that we do a lot in, in, especially in customer service or tech support, right? So uh, it is a systematic, right? It's a system, it's a, it's a process, it's, it's a series of steps, right? That we use to, to determine, to figure out, to understand, the root cause, right? The the main cause of of a problem, right? In regard to the internet uh, connectivity issues or issues with the device, etc. And we're going to do this through a process of elimination. Okay. So this is important. This is key to understanding what is troubleshooting, okay? The process of elimination, what does that mean? So let's say that this is your smartphone, right? A smartphone is, its main purpose is to establish connection uh, to a cellular network, okay? Which is provided by an internet service provider which could be AT&T, Verizon, or in Guatemala, Tigo, or Claro. So its main purpose of a, safe, of a cell phone, of a smartphone, is to always establish connection to a cellular network. So that's the main purpose. That's why it exists, to establish connection to a cellular network. Now, there are many factors, many, let's say, variables that will hinder, right, that will, uh, uh, you know, that will you know, be an obstacle that will hinder that the network establish connections, right? So this network here will try to, uh, the, you know, establish connection, but there are things that will hinder, that will prevent the cell phone to establish connection. Now, um, going back to the process of elimination. So there are many, many variables. Uh, for example, um, a, a variable could be the weather. So it could be raining. There could be an electrical storm. There could be fog. You know, so that could be that could be a variable. Another variable, of, of course, could be the environment, right? So, um, the environment. So perhaps we are in a place where there are a lot of mountains and a lot of trees and all these natural obstacles that the environment presents are it, it, they're going to hinder, they're going to prevent us from connecting to our cellular network. Other things are related in terms to settings or configuration, right? 
So um, your phone needs to have the proper settings, the proper uh, IP addresses, the, the proper protocols to establish a communication between the, the provider and the device. So settings could be a problem, you know. Um, also, um, other, other aspects could be, let's say, hardware. So let's say, you know, all the physical components like routers and SIM cards. So perhaps our router is overloaded and we need to reset it, or perhaps the SIM card got stolen and we need to reconfigure it, right? So hardware could be another, another factor. So there are many, 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 many things, many variables that can prevent the cell phone from establishing a good connection to the, to the network. So we have to understand, we have to determine or figure out what is the cause of the problem, right? There are hundreds of variables of why a cell phone is not connecting. You know what could be a variable? The, the payment. <laughs> the customer forgot to make a payment. So the service is interrupted. So that's a variable. We need to check on that as well. Right? Perhaps everything is everything is fine, but we forgot to check the payment. Oh, and you wasted just like 30 minutes and it was the payment. The service was interrupted. Right. So what we need to do is we need to eliminate, and I want you to remember this, we need to eliminate the variables that uh, are possibly affecting so we can determine the root cause of the problem. So for instance, we're gonna go, okay, no, definitely it's not the weather. So that's out of the picture. Nope, the customer is not on top of a mountain or at the beach. So that's out of the question. Uh, the hardware is good. Uh, the router is establishing connection and the customer already paid his bill. So those are those variables are eliminated. So which that leaves me with one variable, which is the settings. Ah, so now I know that I need to work on the settings. I need to check that my customer has the proper IP addresses and configurations to establish connection to my network. So that could be a cause. So that's basically in a nutshell, what is troubleshooting? It, it's a process, right? That we use to eliminate, right? We systematically eliminate the variables that could be affecting our device from connecting to the internet, let's say, right? And by elimination, we will determine the root cause of the problem. By, by determining or understanding what is the root cause, then we can apply different uh, procedures, different ways of correcting or fixing the problem. So for settings, there are like a hundred different things that we can try uh, in order to assist the customer, right? So basically that's troubleshooting. And that's, and that's what we're going to start learning about today, okay? Now, troubleshooting is part of the scope, right? A scope are the things that you are in, in charge of or responsible, especially in customer service. Customer service deals with billing questions, right? How, how much is my bill and all that stuff. General questions like, when is my last, when did I make my last payment? Or what happens if this happens, right? And troubleshooting, right? In, in, in customer service, we do at least what they say we do is basic. We do very basic uh, troubleshooting. So before the customer is transferred to a tech support, uh, us customer service agents are the first line of defense. We have to do basic troubleshooting. We have to conduct basic troubleshooting before we transfer our customer to the Google experts, right? To the, to the guys that really know uh, more than us about troubleshooting, about this stuff, right? Tech, tech, technology and all this stuff. But as CSRs, we have to conduct the basic troubleshooting. Now, you're probably sitting there and like, Mystery, why do I need to learn this? I want to learn more about the English language. When are you going to teach me how to use the present perfect continuous? Okay, great. Let me tell you why you need to learn this. Well, there are many reasons. Number one, if English is not your first language, then you need to learn all of this vocabulary, right, in English. Secondly, if you plan to work as a CSR or you're currently working as a CSR, practically it's like 50% of jobs available, you're going to have to do troubleshooting because 50% of jobs available have, are related to cell phone companies. So it's very likely, it's very, there's a high probability that you're going to 
have to actually work for AT&T, T-Mobile, or something like that, or a company that's technology-based. So that's another reason. And thirdly, let me give you a third reason. If you're going to apply for a call center, there's usually, besides the interview, you have to do a role play. Like, all right, so let's role play, the interviewer says. Let's pretend I'm a customer and I don't have access to the internet. Can you help me? And you're going to be like, oh, my God, I have no vocabulary for that. Ooh, I'm, oh, I messed up. Right. Don't worry. I'm going to give you the vocabulary that you need so you can pass your training and you can ace your interview. All right. Of course. Right. You're not going to become an expert. You're going to become an expert until you actually start helping customers. But what I will do is give you a good idea. I'll give you a lot of vocabulary, practice time. So when you have to do it in a role play for a job, you'll be able to have high scores and ace it. And when you're dealing with customers, you'll be able to do it and have a good understanding of it, right? Okay, so that's basically what we're going to learn. And we're going to talk about some very cool vocabulary and terminology that we're going to learn in this class, okay? <clears throat> we're going to talk about uh, uh, bandwidth. This is a very important term for tonight, uh, bandwidth or broadband, right? What is bandwidth or, or, or broadband? Well, it's what we call uh, the, um, the capacity of the network. So it's the capacity of the network to, to transmit data between the SIM cards, the towers, and the routers. It's that, it's that capacity that the network has to transfer data and establish communication, right? So let me give you an analogy. An analogy is a comparison. So think about a street, think about a street. So if, our, if we only have a small street, we're only going to have cars going in this direction and cars going in this direction, which means that if there's a queue of cars, we're gonna have hundreds and thousands of cars waiting for their opportunity to pass. So think that the cars, are data packages, okay? The cars, instead of cars, there are data packages. And these data, data packages have to wait their turn to get back and forth, right, in the network. But what broadband does, the word broadband means that it's wide, is that it gives us more space. So now the, our road is bigger, it's wider, it's broader. So if our road is broader, that allows more cars to move around. So the cars that are waiting here, boom, oh, they can go here and not wait here. And the cars that are waiting here, boom, they can travel here. And guess what? Shh. The cars move faster, which means that our data packages are going to move faster. If we have more broad uh, broadband, we're making the street wider or broader, which means that even more cars can move around in our network and that allows for more data to use the broadband to move about and if we do all of this if there's more broadband then this means that video can be transmitted audio can be transmitted of course text images and this class that you're receiving right now it's thanks to the advances in broadband. The technologies responsible for this actually started with something called uh, 1G, 1G technology. After 1G, the, another technology was added on top of that and we have 2G, which is second generation. G stands for generation, okay? Generation network. Then we had the 3G. Okay, so what happened in 3G? We started to get video and audio, so you can start it. You you, you started to watch uh, videos on YouTube, okay. And what became popular in our recent years has been 4G, okay. In 4G, we're able to do Zoom calls and and watch a YouTube video at the same time. That's 4G technology there for you. And right now, the big buzz everywhere is 5G. Wow, the introduction of 5G is going to be a super, uh, it's, it's the broadband is gonna be excessively wide, which means that data can be transmitted in mu at much higher speeds, which means that we could have uh, like 
artificial intelligence, more AI. We can have cars that drive by themselves, appliances in your home, right? All of these technologies will be able, uh, will run on 5G, on 5G networks, because that's what they need in order to, to operate, right? So these technologies have been built upon each other. And this is what we call high-speed data, right? High-speed data, all right? High-speed data is, is what we want to, 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 in order to communicate and, and work faster on the internet. So we're going to talk about this right now. First, we're going to start with very basic vocabulary that I'm going to share with you, and then we're gonna add more layers and layers until you're able to understand it better. Okay, team, are you ready? Let's go.